My name is Elise Bollinger. I came to Fort Lewis College mostly because I'm Osage. Um, the college has a Native American tuition waiver and um, my brother came out here so that's how I learned of it but growing up I always thought I was going to go to Haskell Indian Nations University in um, Kansas so when I heard of Colorado I definitely was drawn out here. Being indigenous the way I've been thinking about it recently is that I will never know everything there is to know about who I can be and and where I come from. And I think that that's something that I have in relation to a lot of students that come to Fort Lewis College. When Pivot Skateboard Deck Art was an exhibition at the Center of Southwest Studies, um, I got to meet the curators, the guest curators that came, Duane Coyoena and Landis Baje, and I was very inspired by their pivot show. It's kind of about walking into worlds as an indigenous person, and um, I was urged to create a student skateboard deck art exhibition, and it was up in the student union and in the library at Fort Lewis, and it got a, a lot of attention, and I also just loved the process of working with student artists. The stories that they told were about identity and um, their background. They wanted to kind of play on these themes of pivot. I was a student representative on the leadership team, and they wanted me to think about how students can engage with the collections, because I connected so deeply with them as an intern here. The Center of Southwest Studies Museum, being a part of Fort Lewis College, being on campus, being a place that holds so many indigenous items, what I've learned is that there is not enough access to them for students. And that's what the goal of Throughline was, was to um, show students that all of, these, all of these pieces made by their relatives, their ancestors, their fellow people who have lived on this land created and it's very meaningful to put that into a space that people can experience and walk around in in a more tangible space and museums or galleries are, are a great resource. I didn't really know how to start but I did and um, started recruiting students through a call across campus and I ended up with 15 students. I took each one of them down into the collections and encouraged them to tell me a, um, a specific thing to look for, so a medium or um, if they were affiliated with a tribe, um, looking for that in the database and then, and then identifying items that they could be related to in some way. We didn't want Throughline to be direct copies of pieces. We didn't want it to be any sort of appropriation. So it's really about connection to a culture, an object that is living and breathing and held here for students to use as a resource. That's the whole reason that we have um, museum collections, is to use as resources. This came together um, with 15 different students um, because they were not all studio art or communication design students. I wanted more interdisciplinary classes and collaborative efforts. So Coots, who made the skateboard, he's a biology student. He was talking to me about how he didn't have a ton of time in his everyday life to create art, but this project gave him a reason to. Another student uh, was in journalism. so. They wrote a poem for their label about being Native, uh, which was very powerful to me. Um, just having different backgrounds coming together to give these different perspectives in a space uh, where you kind of expect art. I consider every student to be an artist, but I don't know if they would necessarily consider themselves that. And then we're also kind of challenging what people think of as art. The museum collections is 70% indigenous. 
and I think that's reflected in Throughline for a lot of reasons in a lot of different ways, but what came out of it is a look at student identity, a connection between past and present, and then how that moves into the future. It's like a story, um, a through line in a story, a connection between the past, the present, that will continue to the future. Sometimes something that's unspoken, unseen, but is continuous. It's so great that these students had a space to tell their story, and it's great that we're talking about culture. Art is not just drawing or painting. There's writing in here, and uh, one of my friends who's a blacksmith created a couple of knives and talked about um, the meaning of, of knives. <laughs> um, have they been used for, um, have, they, have they been an object of danger and have been used for killing but now they can be used for creating so many other things or they've traditionally been used for making food. There's all of these different backgrounds of objects that we got to explore because of the students' expertise in their own craft. These objects in the collections, I consider them to all be living. I consider each piece to still have that energy that the artist or person put into it. And I can feel it, like I could feel it when we put all of these objects in here, that power of, of stories needing to come out of them. They've been downstairs for far too long and nobody has looked at them. But now they're on display and they are just radiating all of all of this information that could have been lost. These students really took on such emotional labor to share a um, intimate story in a public setting. That's so meaningful um, when you're doing art to have to have a connection. Art is patience. And when we look at these pieces, basketry, these useful textiles from the past um, that have been meticulously created for use, not necessarily to put on your wall or to have out for display, but to be used. Now we hold them in a museum and they're not used. Thinking about why that is and how we can use them, how we can be informed by them, and then how we can live our lives in a more artful way. Another aspect of that um, that's specific to the Center of Southwest Studies in Fort Lewis, but can be, I think, translated to any space, um, we have all of these objects that don't have a clear-cut background. Objects sometimes are acquired in um, people stealing or um, killing. So now having, having these objects here, how are we gonna use them in a good way? Tirza Camacho, our artist mentor, said this really well in her label. She called it a social plague, um, where people don't know their roots. Because of assimilation um, and boarding school, specifically for indigenous people, not all across the board, but definitely um, something we talk about a lot now here at Fort Lewis is um, erasure, intentional erasure of people's languages, of their art forms, of their ways of experiencing life. Those have estranged people from their family and their natural way of being. So what I found really important about this project was allowing that conversation to come up and letting it get into the nitty gritty at times and um, asking the question of why do we have this object here. Connecting with objects from the past that are in the collections gave some students the opportunity to even explore their native tribe. Myself, for example, I learned some things about Osage culture that I didn't know as a student who first came here on the tuition waiver. So I did have the opportunity to, I guess, inspiration. I was compelled to contact more people from my tribe. And that's a very powerful thing. 